I could live under the day with her at the house. Living with her in quarantine has been like really hard. I can never get any sleep with her here. Every time I try to go to bed, I just hear the incessant tap dancing. You interrupted the recording. Now I have to redo everything. I just don't know what to do. Every Zoom call, all I can hear are her voice warm ups and her singing. Nobody ever calls on me because it's just too loud. <laughs>
sir. I held my mother's hand as I crossed the street. I colored in my coloring book. I never spoke a word till spoken to. I never hurt a fly. I was the kind who wasn't open to making mud pies. So I'm sorry that I ask you to marry me. I'm so sorry, but the impulse was strong. I'm sorry that I asked you, and I'm sorry that I kissed you. Now I know I was wrong. I saw your freckled face and I fell in love. Love looked a lot like Huckleberry Finn. Love had me running round in circles and singing it in the choir. I dreamed of raising baby turtles when we'd retire. So I'm sorry that I asked you to marry me. I'm so sorry, but the impulse was strong. I'm sorry for the ring pop. And I'm sorry that I taste you now. I know I was wrong. Da 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 I learned to count, I learned how to tie my shoe. I learned that love is better when it's true. I try to make things picture perfect. I try not to make mistakes. Somehow my cheeks are always burning with one more heartache. One more heartbreak. So I'm sorry that I asked you to marry me. I'm so sorry. The impulse was strong. I'm not sorry that I loved you, but I'm sorry that I told you now I know. Now I know. Now I know. I was wrong. Da 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 How happy some or other some can be. Through Athens I am thought as fair as she, but what if that Demetrius thinks not so? He will not know what all but he do know. And as he errs doting on Hermia's eyes, so I, admiring of his qualities, and things base and vile, folding no quantity, love can transpose to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind, nor hath love's mind of any judgment taste. 
wings and no words for your unheedy haste. And therefore is love said to be a child, and because in toys he is so oft beguiled. As waggish boys in game themselves for swear, so the boy love is perjured everywhere. Ere Demetrius looked upon Hermia's eye, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. And when this hail some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved, and showers of oath did melt. Fair Hermia's flight. Into the woods will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. For herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. And now I'm all alone again, nowhere to turn, no one to go to. Without a home, without a friend, without a face to say hello to. And now the night is near, now I can make believe he's here. Sometimes I walk alone at night when everybody else is sleeping. I think of him and then I'm happy with the company I'm keeping. The city goes to bed and I can live inside my head. On my own. Pretending he's beside me All alone I walk with him till morning Without him I feel his arms around me And when I lose my way I close my eyes And he has found me In the shines like silver. All the lights are misty in the river. In the darkness the trees are full of starlight and all I see is him and me forever and forever. And I know it's only in my mind that I'm talking to myself and not to him. And although I know that he is blind, still I say there's a way for us. I love him, but when the night The river's just a river Without him, the world around me changes The trees are barren everywhere, the streets are full of strangers I love him, but every day I'm learning All my life, I've only been pretending that I have never known. I love 
Do you know what I mean when I say alone? Uh, when I really mean alone. I used to think it meant spending every Friday and Saturday night at home, without a date, watching whatever dad and mom wanted to watch on TV, or a couple hours on the phone with Chandra talking about staying home every Friday and Saturday night and then both of us getting more and more depressed about it, or listening to record after record, all of them about people who aren't home any night, forget about the weekends, alone meant walking down the hall at school and never talking to anyone except girls, or having guys point at you and whisper something and then just die laughing or hearing one of them say, hey, brother, that's the perfect girl for you. And then the guy he's talking to just punching him. <laughs> that was alone. Then. But one day, one guy punched another guy and it wasn't because he thought I was such a It was because he didn't want anybody making fun of me. Can you believe it? Standing up for me. Now, I wasn't used to that. But I liked it. And that guy caught up with me and started to talk to me. He was such a goof. He didn't know what to say, and I was so busy turning eight shades of red that I wasn't much help. But a few more trips down the hallway, and we thought of a bunch of things to talk about. We went to some dances and church things together, and he came over for dinner at our house, and Mom liked him, and Dad hated him, so everything was perfect. <laughs> we read about Romeo and Juliet in our English class, and we thought we were just like them. We were in love. We were sure of it.
together we decide to stop at something but every time we went farther and I'm too far I mean, it's okay if you're in love though isn't it I didn't turn out to be we've been going together about six months when I first thought I was pregnant the next month I knew I was I told him. I, I, I was sure. And it wasn't a joke. I loved him. I just stayed quiet for a long time. Then he looked at me and he said, Are you certain it's mine? It hurt so much. And then we just walked away. And he didn't call me. And he avoided me at school. And his mom would say he was gone when I called his house. I finally quit calling. Do you know what it means to be alone? Really alone. young, I was poor, life was harsh and unsure, but a fatherless girl can't complain. Then my fate changed by chance with an innocent dance, with a man who was older and richer and bolder, a man with a taste for champagne and girls like me. Blinded to see, but when the music played, the world would fade away, and I'd sail across the floor, caring less, wanting more. When the music played, somehow my soul obeyed. Heaven would be whispering my name when the music played. So he gave and I took with a word, with a look. I 
I was captured inside of his game. There I was, still a girl in the devil's own world, but a girl who was older and wiser and colder, a girl who felt hunger and shame. Yes, I served like a slave. Sins I'll take to my grave. But when the I'd sail across the floor, caring less, wanting more. When the music played, somehow my soul obeyed. Heaven only knows what I became when the music played. And I hated him, and I wanted him, and I met him with more than I should. And it frightened me how he'd hold me, like he owed me. I said, stay away, but he wouldn't. Oh, God, stay away. I had to live. Can you forgive me? Put the pain aside. Put the past away. Look into my eyes and let the music Yesterday's fade away to a world we restore, wanting less, caring more. Let the music play for who we are today. Let me hear you whisper. are broken. Are you happy now? I'm going to have to get new dishes delivered. I liked those dishes, Teddy. Those dishes were my favorite dishes ever. I got them when I moved in here. They have sentimental value. I don't know why you made me do that, Maybe you were unaware of the sentimental value of the dishes. You're oblivious to my dishes. Of course you are. But have you no heart? Each broken dish was a part of me. A part of me I can never get back. Whenever I eat on the new dishes, I will always remember this day and how you caused me to be cold at night, even though there were things you could do to prevent it. When I'm dying of pneumonia, I will eat my last meal off of these new dishes, and I will remember you and curse you for your unfeeling nature. Devil!
You are the worst creature to ever walk the planet. I will die. I will die of neglect unless you intercede. It's your choice. I'm drowning. All you have to do is reach out your hand and pull me from the icy water. Do you understand? Uh, either you sleep in my bed or you have to move out. Crocodile tears will not be shed. They're not for a lady like I. I can recall what my aunt said when she married for the twentieth time. Falling out of love can be fun after love is over and done. It's an awful blow, but although it's upsetting, so much you can do while you're forgetting. Falling out of love can be fun. When you find your lover has gone, get your second wind and go on. There's an old affair that is there for renewing in your grief. Do you know what you're doing? Falling out of love can be fun. So You'll be swinging in a hammock on a porch One arm wrapped around someone else The other arm carrying a torch Love can give a lady a clout And she may be down but not out Get yourself a date, don't you wait till the count of ten Then falling out of love can be falling in love again Falling out of love can be fun Someone else may soon be the one By another name, he's the same as his brother Close your eyes and one is like the other Falling out of love can be fun If he leaves you after your bed And the stork is over your head Soon you're gonna be with a she or a laddie Smile as you go shopping for a daddy Falling out of love can be fun Soon you'll be losing all your troubles and your fears One eye winking at someone else The other eye filling up with tears When you find your love and romance Gets a sudden kick in the pants Get yourself surrounded and bounded with lots of men Then falling out of love can be falling in love again and again and again and again Falling out of love can be falling in love again There you go, like all the rest of them. I ask you, how do you expect a woman to keep up what you call her sensibility when this sort of thing has happened to her about three times a week since she was 17? It used to upset me and terrify me at first. Then I got rather a taste for it. It came to a climax with Gregory. That was why I married him. Then it became a mild lark, hardly worth the trouble. After that, I found it valuable once or twice as a spinal tonic when I was run down. But now, it's an unmitigated bore. I, I don't mind your declaration. I dare say it gives you a certain pleasure to make it. I quite understand that you adore me. If you don't mind, I'd rather you didn't keep on saying so. At first I was afraid, I was petrified. Kept thinking I could never live without you by my side. 
But then I spent so many nights thinking of how you did me wrong And I grew strong And I learned how to get along And so you're back from outer space I just wanted to find you here with that sad look upon your face I should have changed that stupid lock I should have made you leave your key If I had known for just one second you'd be back to bother me Go on now, go! Walk out the door! Just turn around now! Cause you're not welcome anymore! Weren't you the one who tried to hurt me with your body? Did you think I'd crumble? Did you think I'd lay down and die? Oh no, not I! Survive. I will survive. Hey, hey. It took all the strength I had not to fall apart. Just try and hurt him in the pieces of my broken heart. And I spent oh so many nights just feeling sorry for myself I used to cry But now I hold my head up high and you see me Somebody new I'm not that chained up little person still in love with you And so you felt like dropping in and just expect me to be free Well now I'm saving all my love and for someone who's loving me Go on now go Walk out the door just turn around now, cause you're not welcome anymore Weren't you the one who tried to break me with goodbye? Did you think I'd crumble? Did you think I'd lay down and die? Oh no, not I! I will survive! Oh, as long as I know how to love, I know I'll stay alive! I got all my life to live and I got all my love to give and I'll survive! I will survive! Oh. Okay, Fran, I met a guy about three years ago at a Eugene McCarthy mixer. Anyways, we've been seeing each other off and on ever since. He dates a lot of other women, and I uh, get to see him maybe once every few weeks. He's a teaching fellow at the law school, uh, and Becky, the law school means Yale Law School. I am an Eastern egalitarian asshole from Chicago. He is a creep, but he is a charismatic creep. When I need him, he's nothing. And when I decide to get better and leave him, he is unbelievably attentive. But you see, Becky, the problem isn't really him. The problem is me. See, I know I can make a better choice. I have an old friend, Peter, who I know would be a much better choice, but I continue to allow this guy to account for so much of what I think about myself. I allow him to make me feel valuable, and the bottom line is I know that's wrong. I would tell any friend of mine, that is wrong. You either shave your legs or you don't. Becky, I hope our daughters never feel like this. I hope 
hope all our daughters feel so fucking worthwhile. Do you promise we can accomplish that much, Fran? Huh? Do you promise? Do you promise? By a mother who left me there naked and cold and to a hungry to cry. I never blamed her, I'm sure she left hoping that I'd have the good sense to die. Then of course there's my father, I'm told that young ladies can point to their fathers with maidenly pride. Mine was some regiment here for now, I can't even tell you which side. So of course I became as befitted my delicate birth, the most Casual bride of the murdering scum of the earth. For a lady has modest and maidenly airs and a virtue, I somehow suspect that I lack. It's hard to remember these maidenly airs in a stable laid flat on your back. Won't you look at me, look at me, God, won't you look at me, look at the kitchen slut reeking of sweat, born on a dung heap to die on a dung heap, a strumpet men use and forget. If you feel that you see me not quite in my virginal best, cross my palm with a coin and I'll willingly show you the rest. You have shown me the sky, but what good is the sky to a creature who'll never do better than crawl of all Insanities do to me Rob me of anger And give me despair Blows and abuse I can take And give back again Tenderness I cannot bear So please torture me now With your sweet dulcineas no more I am nothing I know what I'm only Aldonza, the whore! I said sit, God damn it! You are going to sit and listen. When I was little, where I grew up, we had a yard, an acre in the back of our house that was part lawn, part woods. And every fall, these deer, like seven of them, would show up to graze right here. We joked that we had sweet grass or something. We didn't know. We didn't really care. We just liked watching them. Me and my mom and my dad and my three brothers. Until my mom died. Don't worry. I got over it. And news came like that. Over and over, year after year, August to December, and in December they just disappear. Just like that. And then, months later, like every spring, all of these crocuses would bloom right in the spot where they had grazed. Like out of nothing. And they were, wow, stunning. Where had they come from? Magic? Sunshine? Rain? 
I let my imagination run. But then, then my brother said something that I will never forget. He said, it's the fucking deer, Addie. They ate the neighbor's garden and shit the bulbs into our yard. <laughs> Maybe he was full of, well, who knows what. But then, after that, I thought, yes, yes, Addie, life is going to be perfect and you are going to win. Because no matter how rancid the deer shit, you will always get progresses. And here I am. And there you are. And who do you think has won? It's me. Because you, you and Joe, you're both deer shit people. The agency is the deer, and you are the deer shit. And I'm the fucking crocus. The only one. So please just let me talk, just stuff. let me think it through out loud. Please, okay, don't just jump in if I say something stupid or wrong. Please just let me think it through, okay? Because I have always wanted, um, uh, and I, I'm talking in the abstract here, um, I have always wanted, I've always had this sense or idea of myself, always define myself, okay, as, as a person who would, that my purpose in life, that my function on this planet would be to, 
and I'm not that I've ever thought about it like that. <laughs> it's, it's only now that you're asking, or not asking, <laughs> mentioning, <laughs> starting the conversation. It's only because of that that I'm even thinking about it, but it, it's always been a, a given for me, an assumption ever since I was a little girl playing with dolls. Long, long before I met you. But it's never been what I guess it should be, which is an, 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 an extension of, a, of an expression of you know, fucking love or whatever. It's, it's always been... Alright, and this is going to sound really stupid and naive, but... It's always been this image of myself with a bum and glowing in that motherly or pushing a pram or a cot or a mobile above it and singing to it, reading Beatrice Potter or Dr. Seuss. I don't care. I never cared about it being a boy or a girl. It's just, just small and soft and adorable with that milky head smell and tiny socks and giggles and yes, vomit even. It's, it's all part of it. Looking after it. Taking care of it. That's, I think, the impulse. And there's always been a father in the picture, yet, but sort of a, a blurring background, generic man. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's just always been this picture of my life that I've always had ever since I was able to think, and I, I've never questioned it. Never. It would no more take on a new direction. Still, strange as it seems to be, it's truly new to me. That affection, I, I don't know what you do. You make me think that you will change my life forever.
Thank you.